farmers. Let's be honest, we're always complaining about something or other, aren't we? We complain about the weather, we complain about vehicles, we complain about this or that. But hey, in recent times, one thing that farmers all across the world have been complaining about has been the incredibly high cost of fertilizer. And as we know in crop farming, fertilizer is one of our major inputs. But we're not going to sit around just complaining, are we? We're going to do something about it. We're going to make our own fertilizer. We're going to use something that has been used since ancient times, a type of green manure from a magical plant that we were able to plant into this field here at Kimberley long before we came in with our major crop and that has left us with a lot of nitrogen in the ground. I'm talking about sun hemp. Stay with us. Okay, how do we start? Oh yeah, I always say greetings from the farm. Then I say, hope you're well. Then I say, welcome back to the Mondo Farms channel. Then I introduce myself by saying, my name is Chisha Folotea. <laughs> no, in all seriousness, hi, how you doing? Welcome back for another video. And what we're doing on this one is we are going to be talking about a form of green manure that we as crop farmers use in order to reduce our costs of nitrogen. As we all know, plants depend on nitrogen. Without nitrogen, we won't have any crop farming anywhere in the world and there will be serious problems. So as part of the way we grow our crops, we buy in a lot of nitrogen and that's normally done in the form of synthetic fertilizer. But long, 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 long time ago, People in Asia came up with this crop called sun hemp that they use to plant into their fields and that leaves a whole bunch of nitrogen in there. Yes, of course, it's a leguminous crop and we're going to be showing you how we planted our sun hemp. We're going to be showing you how it grew and then how we plowed it all into the ground before we could start making babies and seeds. You know, as farmers, we are selfish people. We only use nature for what we want. So let's start with some background on this magical crop called sun hemp. It is a tropical or subtropical multi-purpose plant that originated in India where it has been grown since the dawn of civilization. It's used for many things, one of which is what we're talking about today, green manure. It is also used as a livestock fodder and it can also be used as a non-wood fibrous crop. It is a member of the legume family and it is a branched, erect, herbaceous, shrubby annual plant growing three to nine feet high with bright green, simple elliptical leaves. Sun hemp has deep yellow terminal flowers and the light brown pods are small, about an inch to an inch and a half wide and inflated. It has a well-developed root system with a strong taproot. You know, there's some bees up there somewhere. It's quite distracting, a little bit worrying, but let's soldier on, shall we? So sun hemp is primarily grown as a green manure. It's also what's called a soil improver and is used as a break from cereal crops like maize, rice, wheat, and other things. And it can also be grown for fodder in some places, as I said earlier. By the way, despite its name, sun hemp is not a true hemp of the cannabis genus. This crop has many names, but its scientific name is Crotolaria junsei. Now I know how to pronounce that, not because I'm a clever clogs, but because I googled Crotolaria junsei pronunciation. And this lovely lady came along and told me how to pronounce it like this. Crotolaria junsei. 
Speaking of names, Sun Hemp also has many names and many ways of spelling and producing, pronouncing its name. For example, the normal way is Sun Hemp, S-U-N-N -N space H-E-M-P. Sometimes they put the sun and the hemp together and just say Sun Hemp, interesting. It's also called Madras Hemp. It's also called Benares Hemp. It's sometimes also called Indian Hemp, Sun, or Sun Crotolaria. Now in French, it has many names, which I'm gonna have to read off this piece of paper. Chanvre Indian, Chanvre du Bengal, Cascavel, Crotolaria effilée, Crotolaire gensiforme, Sonnette, Grand Sonnette, Chacha, Grand Chacha. So I'm standing here at Kimberley, and this is a field we call Kondwani 1. Down there at the very bottom, the guys are preparing for what will be our first vegetable crop here, which will be some eggplant coming in. It's already at the nursery, and it's growing quite well. This field was part of the land clearing that we did at the end of last year and early this year as we were planning to plant our first crops here at Kimberley. And it's, for all intents and purposes, you could call it virgin land. We are going to be planting a crop here and we wanted to maximize the amount of nitrogen in, in this soil. A lot of times in traditional Zambian farming, and I'm sure in other neighboring African countries as well, we do what's called monocropping. Basically meaning we grow one crop every year over and over. And in our case, that happens to be maize. Maize is a monstrous eater of nitrogen. Maize just sucks the nitrogen out of the ground. It is quite incredible. So after one, two, three, four, five, six, seven years of maize having been grown on a piece of ground, you see a lot of degradation as there's nitrogen depletion. So we really wanted to find a way of bringing nitrogen into the fields and into the ground before we started planting our own vegetable, vegetable crops for the Lusaka market here. So we had several options of what we could do and what we could plant here on this soil in order to, to improve the nitrogen. We could have gone for something like soya beans, uh, but we're already planting a whole bunch of soya beans at the other farm and soya beans is, it's got its own thing. We could have gone for something like beans, Kablangeti, Solwezi, all of those other field beans, but I've had a lot of very negative experiences with the yields that we've gotten out of our bean crops over the last couple of years since I started my farming journey. So so beans and me, ah, it's okay. Groundnuts, yeah, I guess we could have gone for groundnuts. But most importantly, we didn't want something that was going to take a lot of time and effort. That was going to need insecticides and pesticides and all of that. We wanted something that could hold the ground during the rain season to prevent erosion because we're on a slope here down to the river and the water topsoil yeah, you know what happens in such cases. So a simple, easy crop that would hold the ground, that's called a cover crop, I think, by the way. I'm sure people will correct me in the comments. And our option that we chose was sun hemp. The seeds are reasonably cheap and pretty much available everywhere. I'm hoping people won't be asking me in the comments, where did you buy your sun hemp seeds? Um, if you're going to be a successful farmer, you need to go out there and do the work. You cannot farm from a computer or a phone on WhatsApp. Let's go out there and actually find where do I find. Make some phone calls, talk to people, and you will find it. Trust me, it is found pretty much all over the place. Quite a lot of farmers grow it. We found the seed, we had to prepare the land, and then we had to plant it. So uh, we're here at uh, uh, Kondwani A, where we are broadcasting uh, uh, the sun hemp. So the seeds are falling down. Thank you. So 
so this whole place has been covered by the uh, whole six kg bags it has been broadcasted here Sun hemp is a strong crop. It grows quite easily. And over the next few weeks, it grew. Really, it grew. It was all over the place. It grew. Uh, so we're here at Kondwani A, uh, where we have our, our sun hemp, um, which was uh, planted here. Then uh, germination is coming up well. Uh, so we're here um, at Kimberley and this is Kondwani Block A where we have our sun hemp crop here. So just after the rains they're looking very, very fine and healthy. They've really grown. And so have these other weeds like the amaranthus and the grass weeds. But the highest population is that of the sun hemp. So two things just after uh, planting or broadcasting, we were attacked by uh, pests that were cutting down the, the crops. Example, like what's happening right now, um, the pests that are cutting off the tips, which are the growing points of uh, the sun hemp. But the crop looks to be or it seems to be very resistant because new shoots are coming through just after being cut. Like this one here, it was cut, but new shoots are still sprouting. But it email a foot in body. It's like uh, it's just some um uh, um bad zoom which was Diaco. They took a very good yet. Come on, I wanna wish you were not very good yet. Come on, I wanna wish you were. What? Uh-huh. I'm going to go to boss prayer more. It's a permission, right? Mm-hmm. Cooler, cooler. Is that doing, sir? So, Kimba, Kondwani Blocko, eh. Uh, so we're here in Kondwani, Block A. Well, we have our sand hemp uh, crop. And so far, it's looking good. It's grown. And it's overgrowing the weeds. So, this 
was uh, broken with the rains. As the rains were that of ice. But impressive with what we're seeing here. You've got some that are even almost starting to flower that are reaching my belly button height above my waist. And uh, we're down here at Konwani A uh, in our San Hem field. What the local is called San Yembe. So we are at the high, that high peak of flowering. Now becoming impossible in here. The bees are busy doing the pollination, and we're heading into um, heading from the flowering. And you know what? The sun hemp looked beautiful. It was nice and tall and it had these beautiful yellow flowers. And it actually was quite pleasant to look at. I used to come in here sometimes when I was troubled with other things and go, hmm, amaluva, amaluva, amaluva. <laughs> but listen, all flowers, when they are pollinated, they become seed pods, sometimes called fruits. And in the case of sun hemp, we don't want flowers to become pollinated and to become seed pods because there's a very simple reason. While it is growing and establishing, you get your nitrogen fixation. Your nitrogen content in the ground goes up. When the plant is now mature, has reached this what we call reproductive stage ambobala, it then goes back and sucks the nitrogen that it had put in the soil um, back. It's like it banks the nitrogen in the beginning and then goes back and withdraws it. Now, we, as I said earlier, selfish farmers, we know exactly what we want from this crop. So before the crop could start podding and making fruits to many of them, we came and plowed it all into the ground. So we're here in Kondwani, uh, and this is Block A, where we have our sun hemp field. And uh, what we're doing here, we are disking our, our field. 
So this disking um, involves the incorporation of uh, sun hemp into the soil or mixing it with the soil. This um, helps act nutrify the soil. And um, as we incorporate, the, the plants are becoming hard as they are flowering. This will help increase organic matter uh, in the soil. As the sun empty composes, it nutrifies the soil with uh, more nitrogen and also the plant debris itself helps me um, add or increase more organic matter. This is serving as green manure, what we're doing because we're not harvesting the seed. So all the nitrogen that was in the ground, we were able to keep it in the ground before the sun hemp withdrew it from the bank account, as I was saying earlier. And then we also get the added benefit in this system of having all that organic material decomposing. So it's been a couple of months now. It's nicely decomposed. It's a high nitrogen content. And we are now starting to do the bed preps to prepare our first crop that is coming in here so there you have it a very simple process sun hemp is a wonderful green manure cover crop as well we don't do livestock so we didn't need it to be able to feed any goats or cows or anything like that but some people do that and that is why we were able to come in and plow it an added advantage of plowing it back into the ground is that on top of the nitrogen that it has already fixed we would then have all this organic material. And as we know, soil is the most important element on a farm. You don't farm the land, you farm the soil. You can have hectares and hectares, the biggest farm in the world, the farm that people envy. But if the soils are poor, there ain't nothing you're gonna get from there. You can have a very small farm with excellent soil, well improved, well taken care of soil, and your yields will be much higher than Vadiawambi, Vadiawakwatefuma farms with poor soil. Here at Mondo Farms, we take care of our soil and we do a lot to try and improve it as much as possible. Added benefit of that, of course, is that we are then able to reduce our fertilizer costs. And as we said, fertilizer, mm -mm, ya doula, ya doula, ya doula, ya doula, ya doula, We'll be planting this eggplant in here very soon and sharing that on some videos in future. The Mondo Farms channel is a place that we share my farming journey here on the two farms that we're operating on the outskirts of Chongwe. If you want to watch more of these videos, then please subscribe to the channel by pressing the subscribe button. And if you press the bell icon, ding, YouTube will let you know when another video comes along, which is once or twice a month these days. If you have other people that you want to be able to see this video, maybe your partners in your farming venture, maybe your farmers, your, your workers at the farm, or maybe just an old school friend that you haven't seen in quite a while, then share it with them. Share it with them via WhatsApp or Facebook or the other social media channels. If you like the video, don't forget to give us a like by pressing the thumbs up button. My name is Chisha Folotia. I'll see you soon on the Mondo Farms channel. Shale Nipo. Bye-bye.